You guys can hear me? Oh, there we go. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm probably going to forget I put this here. So, but anyway, all right. Thank you for the opportunity to come uh, here and speak. Um, it's been an exhausting couple days uh, in Athens. Uh, uh, I have I brought my uh, eldest daughter with me, and uh, we already did a lot of sightseeing. It's a gorgeous city, um, and I set a new record on my Fitbit: thirty thousand steps um, in one day. So. Um, I'm exhausted. Oh, <laughs> clapping. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm from the U.S., uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I've been married for 24 years, and my wife and I uh, have four kids. Uh, like I said, I've got my oldest here, Lily. Um, and I've been using WordPress full-time since 2008. Um, I tinkered with it in 2005 um, because I needed a blog, so... Uh, was a good fit. Um, I run an agency called Clockwork WP, and we build basically uh, marketing uh, websites. And we, we have uh, three developers, two designers, and a project manager that is running the show uh, very well, uh, where I can travel uh, and take some time off and come here. So it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm also uh, an organizer for WordCamp Atlanta. We have WordCamp Atlanta coming uh, October, I think it's October 14th and 15th. Um, so if you want to come to the U.S., uh, you are welcome. All right, setting the scene here. Um, how many of you guys were, guys, gals, um, whatnot, um, how many of you guys were developers um, in the year 2000, building websites? We've got, we've got a few. So a, lot of, a, a few of you are going to know the pains and the headaches of building websites um, back then. Um, in 2001, I was working at basically a, it was, it was basically a phone system company. Um, but because they, it was a phone system company, they had uh, fast pipes, um, you know, the internet uh, they had T1s, T3s, and whatnot, and they also did web hosting. And they brought me in to help them out uh, with maintaining all of these websites that had no functionality. They were just static marketing websites. Basically, if you buy a phone system, hey, we'll throw a website uh, in there. And I just maintained the content, so static HTML, CSS wasn't even really a thing then. Um, it, was, it was starting, but it wasn't really standardized yet. Um, and while I was there working, a client came in and said, I need a website that will give me where I can list all of my properties. They owned properties in Colorado, and they needed to be able to upload images needed to put the square footage of each property in there. So basically, you know, looking back, sounds like a custom post type, you know, with some, some extra metadata. But there wasn't a way to do that. Um, the developer that we had on staff was too busy. He was doing ASP stuff. And so we brought a contractor in, and the contractor decided to use this new programming language called PHP. And... Once the project was completed, it was handed over to me, and I started learning PHP. And this was, you know, pre-YouTube. Anytime I need to fix something uh, today, I just go to YouTube, type in, how do I fix this plugin, or how do I fix this? Even, even you know, how do I change the oil in my uh, lawnmower, or what, you know, whatever. Uh, we didn't have those things. I would, I would go to Barnes & Noble, and which is a bookstore, um, and I got a bunch of PHP and MySQL books, and I learned how to program, make, make the pages that I was maintaining more dynamic. And that kind of predated all of these frameworks that we have, like Django, Ruby on Rails, things like that, all those great, great tools. WordPress predates all of that stuff. So you're going to hear me talk about WordPress kind of in a negative light, um, and it's not because WordPress isn't any good. It's just it was really basic at the beginning. So anything I say in here that sounds negative, I've made a living off of WordPress ever since. So I'm not, I'm not complaining in, in any way, form, or fashion. 
All right, so the early years. How many of you guys used WordPress before 2005? Got, I see two. That sounds about, sounds about right. Um, so WordPress was a, or is a fork of B, B2 or Cafe Log, and it was discontinued by the original developers. And obviously it didn't, uh, at least it's, um, Source didn't, you know, die. It turned into WordPress, um, you know, because of Matt and Mike and what, what they did. All right, so I don't understand. Um, so the first version of WordPress was 0 0.7. I couldn't find a copy of 0 0.7. Uh, if you go to the website, go to wordpress.org, you won't see a 0.7. You'll see a 0.71. If anyone has the 0.7, let me know. I'd like to check that out too, see what the difference is. It's probably a, a typo or something uh, that, that, that's the difference. Uh, it's, uh, okay, so I decided, I took a bunch of screenshots instead of trying to set up, I'm, I figured here I'm not going to have a computer where I can give you a demonstration of, of WordPress on a living server. So I did screenshots, and it makes it probably a lot easier uh, for me too which is good. And so just because something is open source doesn't mean that it's going to be always easy to set up. I spent too much time <laughs> trying to get a version of uh, PHP 4.4 on a, on a machine. I tried to go with a 2003 uh, version of Debian, which is a, a Linux uh, distro, and I kept failing. I would download an ISO, and it couldn't find all the packages. None of the packages I was looking for, uh, I, could, I, I just couldn't find it. And so I wound up finding a version of Debian on the Wayback Machine, uh, which hopefully it didn't have any viruses or anything in it. Um, but I, I got it up and running, and eventually, after about like three hours of, of hacking at it, I got WordPress up and running, and it looked really ugly like like this. This is what, whoops, this is what uh, a browser looked like, you know, around 2008-ish, 2007 on a Linux machine. Not the prettiest thing in the world. So I was able to switch over to use Chrome or Chromium technically, and now I've got these uh, better screenshots. But this is the first version of WordPress I could get up and running. This is what WordPress looked like. It looked real simple. The login looks pretty much the same as it is now. Uh, it's a little prettier now. The, with the logo, uh, we have an updated logo now, and the buttons are, or the links here are, are moved around a little bit, but it's pretty much the same zoomed in version of that. When you log into WordPress, there, is, there was no dashboard. Uh, it was just, boom, start writing. It was a very simple platform. But, sorry, I'm learning this. I'm hitting, keep hitting the wrong button. All right, so you have basically things that you're gonna be very familiar with within WordPress because you have post and edit. You have, this was called team. On the, on the menu, which now is called users. You've got options, categories. The template is where you can edit uh, the, the, it wasn't a theme. It was basically the first version of WordPress was a one pager uh, that displayed the blog. You have the links here, which actually links has kind of disappeared. It's, I think if you wanted to use the links, you have to drop a, a line of, um, code into your functions.php file uh, to have links working. So that kind of fizzled uh, and dis disappeared. We have the My Profile, and then you can view the site and log out. But one of the things that's really cool is that there's other terms that you're going to be very familiar with. Uh, you've got the title, excerpt, post, the categories, you know, the published status, all of these things that are the exact same terms that we use today. When you go and you edit a page, 
I shouldn't say page, post, um, you just would scroll down on that page and you can start e uh, edit or you can add a new one here. When you edit it, pretty simple. You can drop in an excerpt, you could change the title, very similar to what, what we have today. The delete, delete this post is a little, little different. But overall, the terminology that we see in WordPress today is very similar to what we had 20 years ago. Your team management, which later was renamed to users, you can, uh, you can edit your users there. And this is kind of unique right here. It says, to delete a user, bring this level to zero, then click the red X. So you can edit the user, change the level from 10 to zero, and then a little X mark will show up, and then you can delete it. And then when you delete that user, all of its posts will disappear forever. Uh, just like today, I had a user, not today, in pre previously, uh, I had a client contact me and say, the home page is messed up. And I said, what were you doing? They said, well, I was deleting users. And I said, so you didn't reassign the post to an, a valid user. Um, so that, I'm assuming, was fixed you know, later because that's a pretty dangerous thing. If you only have one, one or two users and you delete your post, you don't, or you delete that user, all the posts are gone. We have the options, which we still have an options page. This one is just pretty much the uh, time zone, uh, how you want the time to, to display. Notice there's no, um, there's no actual time zone. You can't specify which time zone you're in. So I would assume it would have picked it up from the server, which I guess worked back then. Uh, would be a little problematic now. We've got categories you can add, edit, remove, and delete, just like, just like we do today. And then we have just built in, this, this is turned off on, I, I think about like uh, WP Engine, when you log in to WP Engine, if you have a site on there, by default, they have the editor turned off, if, I, if I'm remembering that correctly. And Pretty, a pretty dangerous feature to have, have right there where you can just edit the page because WordPress display just one single page. You can edit it right here. And notice there's no, there's no, um, no head, uh, like WP head or WP footer or anything like that. That comes in, in the next, next version, I think in 1.5. Um, and then, Basically, at the footer, uh, it just closes. So one, one simple page to display all of your blog posts, which is pretty simple, pretty basic, but it, it got the job done. The other feature that we had is uh, managing links. Uh, like I said, it's kind of disappeared now. It's a feature that it's still in the database, but it's not, it's not built in uh, anymore. Um, but I thought it was kind of cool that Matt still gave credit uh, to the original uh, company that, or person, I guess, that, that created uh, the B2 blogging platform. And then if you go up here, if you hit my profile, it would actually do a pop-up. And this just kind of really shows the age here. We've got ICQ and AIM and MSN, Instant Messenger, and Yahoo. We don't see Twitter, Facebook, you know, the, thing, the social media links that you would have today. Uh, in fact, I think a lot of these services are probably dead. Uh, I can't tell you the last time I used ICQ. It's probably been 15 plus years since I've used ICQ. But that was, those were the tools we had back then. So, and that's basically WordPress version 7.01. That's what it looked like, and that's how simple it was. But it started, to, to me, a revolution where now, now WordPress has 40 plus percent of the, of the market share. 
within uh, this version, you can tell that everything was still prefixed. I guess not everything, but most things were still prefixed with a B2 uh, prefix. So you have, instead of a wp-config.php file, you've got a B2 config.php file. The only things that are prefixed with WP is the WP admin and WP links, which the links doesn't even exist anymore, and we just have a WP admin. If you look at the source code, uh, it's, it's kind of funny. This is the install script, um, which is slightly different than how you install WordPress now. Actually, now, I mean, how many of you guys actually manually install WordPress now? Now we have installers that make it super simple uh, to do. Uh, but this is what the install script uh, looks like, and I'm just showing the source code here just to show we've got, it's messy, basically. Try, I don't know how to say it nicely. We've got CSS injected um, in here where this probably should be on a .css file somewhere. Uh, we also have a closing head tag and no opening head tag, and I sat there for five minutes you know, before I got in front of a group of people, like, does it say head somewhere? I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Um, so it's kind of the first version of WordPress had incorrect uh, HTML markup. Oh, and then the last thing. This is, this is actually really cool. This link here that's in the CSS, uh, it still works. So they, they kept that image uh, live, you know, for 20 years, which that's, that's pretty cool. I know that's not that big of a deal, but I think it's pretty awesome. And then if you, uh, if you look at the installs, uh, install script and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see some pretty funny stuff. Uh, things like here on line 158 said, did you, this is after you, you'll, Go to the page, and it'll, you'll try to put in your MySQL username and password, and then when you hit submit and it works, it'll pop up and it'll say, did you defeat the boss monster at the end? Great. You're ready for a uh, step for step two, which that just shows that I, if I showed that to a client now where WordPress had comical things in there. They, they probably wouldn't have taken WordPress, you know, quite, quite as seriously. But, I mean, it's cute um, and, and a little funny. Uh, and then you'll also see on the same script, we were injecting SQL all on, on one page, where that should, you know, in a bigger uh, framework, a v more mature uh, framework, you would separate your SQL and your CSS and all that stuff into different different files. Uh, but this was the first version. And then through the years, um, WordPress progressed. It was um, in uh, version one came out uh, in uh, 2004, and we have basic uh, blogging like we did before, but we also have spam protection. And in this version, we, we have everything, not everything, almost everything prefixed with WP now, except for there's a couple uh, RSS feed uh, files that are still prefixed with B2, but overall it was becoming more uh, WordPress labeled uh, stuff. And this, I thought this was kind of cool. The admin directory here uh, was, um, there's only files in there. There's no directories. If you, go, if you look at the WP admin now, there'll be nine directories, which probably has, there's probably 500 files, you know, in that directory now because of all the functionality that we have. In uh, 2004, uh, we got the plugin architecture coming in and the sidebars uh, were coming in. So you'll see in the files, there's a WP content directory with plugins and one file plugins, but we're starting, uh, which is good. This also, in this same year, I'm just gonna read this. Uh, the market leader in the blogging tools industry at the time was Movable Type. They announced a new license term, which were not 
uh, that were not liked by many of the users. Basically, it forced, it gave WordPress uh, a big push because a lot of people moved away from movable type and moved over to WordPress. So that was one of the first big pushes that, that we had. And also in this version, version uh, 1.2, um, it this wasn't labeled correctly. Uh, it's still uh, identified as version uh, 1.0.1, which is kind of cool. Um, in 2005, and this is where I think WordPress started getting a lot more uh, something that we're familiar with as someone that, that has written a ton of themes. Um, this, this part to me was super important, 1.5. This is when I first started using WordPress and I was just using it as a blogging platform, but if you're into WordPress, and I'm gonna run out of time here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip a couple things. Um, that was a quote from Matt basically saying, we did this, which is we created where you can have themes and instead of WordPress being on a single page, we now have all of these archives, not archives, sorry, we have all of these different uh, page templates, which as a themer, uh, that comes in super handy because it gives you this hierarchy that I've stared at for hours on end trying to figure out why I'm not pulling in the right uh, archive or template or whatever. Um, but so that's, that's been in place for 18 years now. Uh, and this is what the theme uh, looked like in 1.5, the default theme, which that's really what my blog looked like too because I wasn't that creative. Uh, I kept it blue and, blue and boring. In uh, 2005, we got a better uh, interface. We got a text editor, uh, finally. Uh, JavaScript was used for the first time on the pages. So when you edited a page, edited a page, it wouldn't, uh, you didn't have to reload to see it, uh, which, is, which is pretty handy. And then Akismet was also in this package, and I think it's in, still in there uh, today. And this is what the interface looked like starting to look kind of familiar. Um, and now WordPress kind of as a CMS almost. Um, we have here, we've got short codes. Uh, we have a revamped admin interface. The media library is better. Um, and this is where I started theming and getting into um, really just breaking WordPress, going in and figuring out how to do stuff. And that's when I started building themes. Uh, this is the interface that we, um, we got um, and looks familiar. Um, it's a little prettier than the, the original one. Someone spent some time on, on theming here. This is when I started really using WordPress and this is where I consider WordPress as a good enough system for me to start building everything on WordPress. This is where custom post types came in. And with custom post types, we got a ton of functionality, you know, where I could build anything for any of my clients. You needed some kind of, uh, you need articles. You had pages, you had your blog, but I need to do like news articles. I could do a custom post type to do that, which, which gave me pretty much everything I needed to start really building, building WordPress. We also got a much prettier uh, interface and a sidebar on, on the left as opposed to the menu being on the top in here. And then in 2011, we got uh, an improved media library, the flyout menu uh, that we still use today and there's a drag and drop upload file uh, for file management. In 2015, and I'm jumping pretty, pretty fast here, um, but we got the REST API, and I use the REST API uh, not, not that often. How many of you guys edit or use the REST API? That is a much higher number than I expected. Normally in the, uh, in Atlanta when I do a meetup and I ask people, very few people are actually using the REST API. Um, we use it regularly at our, at our company, so gave us a ton of functionality. Uh, in 2018, uh, version 5.0, we got Gutenberg. So the 
official uh, page builder uh, within uh, WordPress. And then uh, 5.5 in 2020, we got the lazy loading, we got the auto updating uh, for plugins uh, and themes, which finally broke something for me for the first time um, about a month ago, uh, which was kind of annoying. But um, overall, it was it was working really well for me. Um, it was a bug in one of the plugins. Um, and then uh, we got sitemaps improvement. Um, and then uh, 2021 with 5.5, we got uh, full site editing, which I still have yet to use, uh, but I'll be using it with a massive project that I'm doing uh, this fall, and we're going to finally be using Gutenberg to build the whole site. And now we're almost caught up, but that, that is it. So I am up for questions if anybody has any questions. And I said I would forget about my water, but... Thanks. Now I've turned my mic in. I think a round of applause for Aaron, please. That was a great talk. So as, uh, as Aaron mentioned, we have a QA now for 15 minutes. So we've got space for questions. One question uh, per person, please. If you've got anything else, you can ask Aaron after the talk. Do we have any questions from the floor? We've got one right there, please. That was great, Aaron. Thank you. Um, I'm interested to know what you did for your client with the property when you didn't have the custom post type. So that was, we built a complete custom PHP uh, website. So, um, you know, there was property.php that would do the SQL stuff. So, I mean, it was um, just a lot of HTML and PHP Probably poorly written stuff. Anytime I look at code, I, I, even if it's six months ago, I mean, that's why I kind of feel bad like dogging on uh, WordPress because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cr critiquing something that's 20 years old, you know, uh, and I look at code that's six months old and I think, I can't believe I wrote like that. Um, but so that, that was just a custom uh, PHP build. So um, I have no idea. I quit that job a couple years later, and the site was still up. So I don't even, I don't remember what it was. I don't have a copy of the source code or anything. I'd love to look at it, though. It would be kind of funny to see. So. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have another question from the floor? I've got a question for you. Um, There's one. Oh, there is one there over there. Okay, great. That's cool. Let's have that one. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> Is it on now? Yes. Yep. Yep. Hello, um, Sonny Hello. from Finland. Uh, can you remember when was the first time you ever saw anything about security uh, mentioned in, in any of the WordPress releases? I, I, I think that over the years it has gone from being um, not really security aware at all uh, to being awfully bad at security, having an awfully bad reputation. But then it has over time now with the plugin update, automatic updates and things like that, it has been evolving um, to a very positive direction from my perspective. But can you remember from the developer's perspective or the, um, the actual open source project perspective when somebody mentioned a thing called security for the first time? That is a really good question. Um, I got, in 2013, I got about 20 sites hacked. Um, and I'm trying to think of what I could have done to, it was, it was at, I won't mention the host, 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 uh, hosting company's name, um, but, uh, all of the sites got hacked because they had, they had something that was, uh, not, uh, standard and, um, we, there was a animated, uh, pirate skull, like, bouncing and spinning around on, the, on, on all of the websites on that server. Um, but I, that was like 2013, and I know I didn't have anything like, I don't think WordFence, ex did it exist in 2013? You know, I don't know. Um, I, I don't remember, I don't remember any, anything uh, <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it comes to that. Um, 
I really should like go through my email and and find that out. Um, I I don't remember. I know that when when those sites got hacked uh, around 2013, that's when I started. I, I moved hosting and I started taking it more seriously. But I don't remember from from the WordPress perspective. And you know, uh, I don't I don't know. So wish I could give you more. So <laughs> sorry. Do you have another question from the floor? Uh, one there in the middle, please. He's got the mic. There we go. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Shall I go first? Sorry, you're a lot further from a microphone. Uh, it's great to look at WordPress's history over the years, and all of, it's very easy to see all of the things we've gained. Do you think there's anything that we've lost from the simplicity of the earlier versions? Spicy question. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's hard. Uh, so I once worked on a website, and once I logged in, I said I'm not working on that site. So I, I can't say I really worked on it. There, there were 104 active plugins uh, on on the site, and I said I said I'm not touching it. Um, so I I would say that one of the things we've I don't know if we've lost, but one of the, one of the problems is that we do, we have so many plugins that do so many things, and people don't. Think through a lot of times, I, and, and it's not at their own. I mean, it's not their fault if they have they have a tool and it's so easy to push a button, you know, to just oh, I need something to add this and this and this, and you wind up having all this repetitive, um, you know, a plugin to do one thing. But uh, you know, it, so I would I would say what maybe maybe we've gotten gotten a little too bloated in the aspect in the plugin world, um, but. You know, that's, I don't know, I can't tell all the sponsors uh, here, you know, <laughs> that, you know that. Um, but, it, it, and it's, it's not them, it's just, we, we just, we have a lot of, I think it's users just tend to add, add a lot. So it's more of a user, um, a user issue or lack of knowledge. Um, and I, I tend to tell people when we build a website, when we build a site, we wind up having about 10 plugins, uh, 10, 10 to 12. And I tell people, if you wind up having 20 plugins, you probably need to rethink what, what you're doing. Um, and there's probably a custom solution that needs to be built. And now, when I say custom, probably custom WordPress. I mean, because um, we build everything uh, within WordPress. Because, again, I see WordPress as a, as a platform more so than a blogging platform or even a marketing, uh, you know, tool. It's, to me, it's a, it's, a, it's a tool to build anything that you, you can imagine. So I think we had, did someone else had a question in the middle? Okay. I'm glad I have a hat on because it's blocking the <laughs> light, light. Just curious with you being in the game for so long. Have there ever been times where you thought, like, no, I want to do something else in WordPress? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I and I've 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 gone through that. Actually, in 2008, I set up about 10 different CMSs um, and kind of compared um, the Joomla, Drupal, Concrete Five, I, uh, CMS Made Simple, all all a lot of them, and I wound up WordPress wound up winning, um, and I love it and. No, I don't, I don't think I'll ever... I tell people that there are so many websites that are based on WordPress right now. If WordPress were to die today, I probably will be able to be an old man that is fixing WordPress sites because there's so many of them. Uh, there's so many, you know, there's going to be legacy, you know, stuff. If it disappeared today, there'll be legacy stuff, you know, that has to be maintained for years, years on end. Um, and I think I'm too old to change, <laughs> at, you know, at this point. You know, I have so much um, vested in uh, the knowledge of WordPress. It's just so much easier to build, build things on, on WordPress versus, I mean, like in 2006, I learned uh, some Ruby on Rails stuff. Um, loved Ruby on Rails, um, but it's a lot more, it was... I was doing websites for like three thousand, four thousand dollars, you know, and a Ruby on Rails project, you know, it's it's going to be it's going to need a lot more, you know, than that. So it was just much easier to use WordPress then. But yeah, I don't I don't think I'll ever uh, veer off unless for some reason it goes, you know, super super crazy, um, you know, off. But I mean, 
we, we, have, we have such a good community where I just don't think it, it would happen. But yeah, I think I'm going to be an old guy that's editing WordPress until I retire. So. Thanks. That was a great question. Do we have any more questions from the floor? We've got a few more minutes left. Well, I've got one then. That's all right. So, over the course, you've shown us over the course of 20 years of WordPress, back when you know people still had blog rolls and things like that, right? Yeah. Before Stack Overflow. Oh, horrible, horrible thought. But what do you think has been the change with the most impact over that 20 years? And was it the Hello Dolly plugin? Um. <laughs> so hold on. Yeah. I started. I started trying to process my question before I, qu I what, give me the last part of the question no, again. I was, I was only joking. Oh, you were so, joking. Okay. Yeah. I, I, the the thing that changed the most. I mean, I I know that that Gutenberg's a big deal. Um, but again, I haven't started using it. I use I use Beaver Builder uh, to build most of the sites. Now I'm going to have an enterprise site that I'm I'm building in the fall where I'm going to use uh, Gutenberg because I need that site to last me ten years. You know, I I can change out page builders if it's just a marketing site that has little you know functionality. I can change that out every three years. You know, when they decide to rebrand or whatever, that's not that big a deal. Um, so I I think the thing that changed the most, I mean, at least for me, I know that the, the REST API is super important, but that's, to me, more higher level uh, companies you know, that, that'll be accessing that. And to me, the, the custom post types just has to be the most important thing because that, that we, we used to go in and uh, if we needed, let's say, uh, press releases or something, uh, the company had press releases, you would create a press release category, you would hide it from the blog, and you'd display it on a specific page, and it was such a headache um, to try to hide, to make WordPress do what it should you know, be doing. Um, so I, to me, custom post types was definitely the, num the number one thing uh, in 2010, and that's, that's when I, I didn't feel bad uh, trying to use WordPress because it became it became a CMS to me at that point as opposed to a blogging uh, platform. So great, thank you. Yep. Um, do we have any more questions from the audience? Okay, if not, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you again to Aaron. It was a great talk. <laughs> <laughs>